Adventures and Brews fail! We're out here, Six Flags Great Adventure. We are here filming the fourth episode of Tailgate Talk. Wait, what? Uh, That's not to the stumble. Oh, man, you were right. Who are we interviewing again? Scott. Scott from Upstop Media, that's right. Yes. Bam, Scott is going to be on our fourth episode of Tailgate Talk. We will be filming at SeaWorld Orlando. We will be talking all things RMC documentary, all that good stuff. Can't wait to have him on. So, Drew, what are we doing here? Talking about our favorite coasters. Oh, that's right, our favorite coasters. What are some of your favorite coasters? Let's hear your top three. No, let's hear yours. Oh, okay, my top ten. Let me pull out this bad boy. I got it listed right here. So, Bam, if you see my video from last year, I did a top ten from last year. Has changed up a little bit, but I'll name them all for you. Give me one sec. Here we go. My top ten coasters, one to ten. Uh, let me do it. I'll, I'll do a, a backwards count. I'll do ten to nine. At ten, we got Boulder Dash. At nine, we got Iron Rattler. At eight, we have Outlaw Run. At seven, we have Mako. Six, we have the all new Velocity Coaster. That could change. It could move up higher after the stumble. At five, we have Sky Rush. Four, we have El Toro. Three, we have X2. Two, we have Steel Vengeance. And at number one, of course, talk about it all the time, we got the Fury 325 down at Carowinds. Love that ride. So what's your 11 to 20? My 11 to 20, huh? Well, it is. All right, guys, I'm going to start at 20 and work my way down to 11. So at number 20, I had the Cyclone located at Coney Island's Luna Park. This is a roller coaster with not only a lot of history, but a lot of airtime. My one ride on this in early October of this year was honestly terrifying. It was one of the few times I can ever say on a roller coaster, I was legit afraid to put my hands up. Crazy to think this ride is almost 100 years old. At number 19, we have Goliath at Six Flags Great America. Fam, to think this roller coaster all started as a drawing on a napkin at a bar in downtown Chicago. The fifth roller coaster done by Rocky Mountain Construction arguably has one of the best elements on a roller coaster in its insane zero G stall. Also, only one of four topper track models done by RMC, but the ride is still so smooth you would never be able to tell. This ride's pacing is relentless, and the only thing holding it back from being higher on this list is it's just a little too short. Alright, here we go. At number 18, we have Stunt Pilot at Silverwood. I can promise y'all this will not be the last RMC on this list, but it is the newest RMC on this list. Stunt Pilot is a newer, more modified version of the original Raptor prototypes, Wonder Woman and Railblazer. It is very hard to believe that the original prototypes are more intense than this, because this thing is just absolutely insane. Every single time I would hit the brake run, my head was spinning. If the prototypes are truly more intense than this, I am sure you will be seeing them on this list very soon. BAM! At 17, we have Maverick at Cedar Point, Ohio. This ride could legit be number one on this list, if they would just switch out the overhead shoulder restraints and put in lap bars. Seems so simple, but clearly something's holding it back. Regardless, it is that good. You could really make the case that this is the ride that has the best first drop at Cedar Point. And the first drop's only 100 feet. At 16, we have now our third RMC on this list, Twisted Timbers. Love airtime? Love inverted first drops? Love evil apple tree theming? Sick. Then you will love this ride, as it has all three. This is definitely the best roller coaster at Kings Dominion, and honestly, the best roller coaster in Virginia overall. Yeah, so at 15 I got Matt, that is the worst top 20 I have ever heard. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Literally, why is Maverick so low? Yo, guys, calm down. It's about to get better, I promise. At number 15, want to take a guess on the manufacturer? That's right, it's Bing Fari. Just kidding, it's another RMC. At 15, we have Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. Another roller coaster on this list with an inverted first drop. I feel like this ride gets better and better every time I ride it. Maybe that's because usually as the day goes on at a park, I tend to have had a good amount of beer. But regardless of this, the ride never lets up and really tries to throw you out of your seat. It also legit chases storms. Just kidding. It actually is closed door storm. Go figure. At number 14, we have Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. This is the only muck ride to make this list. However, Copperhead Strike was very close. This was my number one bucket list roller coaster in the U.S. for a while, so when I finally got on it, I was ecstatic, and the ride did not disappoint. 
The first drop from row 7 will have your stomach dropping all the way to inner earth. And the rest of the ride is such a crazy and unique experience. And the launches, though not intense, really do add to this experience. It is hard to explain what this ride is like until you've done it for yourself. I really look forward to more muck rides like this one in the future in the United States. At number 13, we may have my most controversial decision on this list. At 13, we have the Gravity Group Wooden Coaster, The Voyage at Holiday World. I am not again going to explain why I have this roller coaster ranked lower than most enthusiasts. If you wish to know, you can go check my Is Holiday World Overrated video. I will say that if the Voyage remained trimless, it would be my number one roller coaster. P.S. I no longer think Holiday World is overrated. That place is fantastic. Love you, Leah. My next two roller coasters are Twisted Colossus at number 12 and Lightning Rod at number 11. These are two roller coasters that made my top 10 last year. If you would like to see what I thought about them, you can go and check that video out. Instead, I thought it would be cool to talk about the two roller coasters that I have ridden in the last year that slid into my top 10 and removed two of the more popular rides in the country. At number 8, we have the second RMC ever built, the Topper Track Woody Outlaw Run. Not going to lie, I did not think this ride was going to be as good as it was. I've always seen it was short, so I was always like, how good could it possibly be? Boy, was I ever wrong. This ride packed so much into its 2,937 feet of track, and the wave turn down the hill caught me super off guard, and really feels like it lasts forever. Also, this ride at night is just absolute insanity. Outlaw Run is an absolute work of art. RMC really knocked it out of the park with their second roller coaster. Alright y'all, last up, but certainly not least, drum roll please! We have what was the most anticipated ride of 2021. The hype for this ride was real fam. We have at number 6, the all new Intamin launch coaster, Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure. The first time I got off this ride, I actually thought Maverick was better. Bam! Some post-ride reaction for you. Alright, that was dope, man. I really enjoyed it. The barrel roll over the water was sick, man. Something Maverick doesn't have. But in my opinion, just my opinion, I'm going to get on it later. My opinion may change a little later. Um, Maverick is better. But that was certainly not the case after my back row night ride. Both launches are hella intense. The backseat coming over the top hat is Yeet City and can easily be described as the feeling of almost getting murdered on Skyrush's first drop. The drawn out corkscrew is just nuts and the Mosasaurus roll is hands down the best element on a roller coaster, period. I cannot wait to get on this thing again in a week at Velocistumble. Are you coming with us, fam? Like I said, this could move up in my rankings after. We shall see. Well, y'all, that's a wrap for our 50th video. Thanks for sticking with us and checking out our channel over the last three years. We make these videos for you guys. You guys, after all, are the Coasters and Brews fam. And without you guys, 50 videos would just not be possible. So seriously, thank you so much. And if you're new, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace. Get the feeling right.